believe that we should unite with our allies. Indeed. Making effective the only plan currently formulated for the League of Nations. A democratic now, plan, I might Mr. Imagine. Harding would have you believe that we should be an isolationist country, that Amen. we should play a lone hand in the world, thereby increasing the size of our army and our navy to protect our isolationism and returning the taxation burden on to the good American people. And we won't have that, will we? No. no. Will we? No. no. I think it falls upon deaf ears, sir. Indeed. And, and sir, just uh, may I ask, who are you, sir? Yes, you may, my good man. As the gentleman indicated, I my name is Edmund Moore. Edmund Moore. Edmund Moore, Edmund Moore. yes, sir. I had the good pleasure of working to promote the message of Governor Cox, your governor, <laughs> President Wilson, and the entire Democratic Party. Yeah. Now it seems fortuitous that I am here in Marion, Ohio. My train has broken down. Now I can be here to set the record straight. And so has your party. To set the record straight and expose the lies of this charlatan and the failures of Senator Harding. Senator Harding has failed. He failed in his bid for governor, not once, but twice. He has failed to represent the constituency of Ohio. And now he wants to take that failed message to Washington, to our nation's highest office. And we won't have it, will we? No. <laughs> I say, will we? No. Democrats in the crowd, will we? It seems to know you were well acquainted with failure, sir. Yeah. <laughs> sir yeah. I would have to say, sir, that it is for the people that you can decide with here tonight and for the rest of the Ohioans to decide. I would
the men. Thank you, those terrible, yes. horrendous decisions. Yes, yes. here. They yes. have. We will make better decisions. But would you no, not agree, that madam, that, that women have always been behind their men? Yes, but they Now you the have men. Mr. Dowry, let the same lady have her say. Do you know what's going to happen? Mark my word, every one of you who wants to vote, ladies and men, the next thing that will happen is that the women will want to run for a political oh office or yeah, even, vote for her. Is that yeah. right? or even join the army. <laughs> I'm just a local farmer here. During the war, I did what was wanted of me. I went out and purchased new Uber tractors so I could plant more grain. After all, feeding the boys overseas fighting in Europe, I was very proud to be a part of that. But the war's over with. My silos are full, right? The prices are at rock bottom. How are you going to help the farmer? How am I going to survive? My dear friend, Senator Harding does indeed he sympathize and respect you, the farmer, he realizes that you have suffered greatly. Your warehouses are, as we shall say biblically, stocked like that of Egypt before the great famine. But unlike Joseph, who was able to sell the grain, you, sir, find yourself with rock bottom prices. Am I not right? Well, Senator Harding proposes to help you get your feet back on the ground by a protective tariff which will allow you to once again become the upstanding, producing, strong citizens that this country needs to move forward. Vote for Senator Harding and you shall be on your feet again. Senator Harding, Senator Harding, Senator Harding, Governor Cox owns his family. He owns it. So he understands the plight of the American farmer. Indeed, he pays somebody else to pay. And he understands that the consumer pays, an un or pays a price that is not the same as what you get for your produce. He calls for an end to unfair pricing. He also understands that we need to set up cooperative buying and selling of commodities for you. Hmm. What about the veterans of the Great War? Yes. Yes. My yes. husband yes. and I have, he has a surgery that he desperately needs and yet we can't afford it on his salary. And as a blacksmith at the Marion Power Shovel Company, he's not going to be able to pay for it. What will happen to us and to our three children? My dear ladies, Senator Harding is not unsympathetic to the disabled veteran. His father, you know, was a vet of the great war that tore this nation to thunder. So he understands the plight of those who come home to broken homes that have broken men coming home. What he is tinkering with at this very moment, even as we speak, my dear, is a ray of hope for you and your husband. A Veterans Bureau that will combine all of the medical services that our disabled veterans need, and even more to the point, yes, will yes, rehabilitate yes. them so that they can once again become useful members of society and regain their position as whole men, acceptable yes. and honored yes. by Americans yes. to their country. Man, Governor Cox. Oh, absolutely. I'm absolutely. sure. Governor Cox believes that our soldiers coming home from war, our disabled veterans, have are the most important thing to our country right now. And I dedicate myself, Governor Cox dedicates himself, and the entire Democratic Party to coming to a solution to help the, re uh, the returning veterans of this country. And with urgency and immediacy. Everyone, the train has been fixed. It's time for this to go. Oh, oh. Yes, I think we fixed oh, the train. The train Excuse me, ready. ladies and gentlemen. Get out of town. I apologize. It was wonderful visiting your great Community. Remember when you go to the ballot box to vote for your governor, Governor James Cox. Thank you very much. No, 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 I do.
friends. Good day, my friends. Good day.